I'm standing in Ramsden Street, Clifton Hill, in front of the home of Number 6. Number 6 Ramsden Street, which on the on Sunday, August 9th, 1987, was the home of 19-year-old Julian Knight. Now on that Sunday, August 9th, 1987, uh, Julian Knight woke up in this home at around midday and then circa 1.10 p.m. He drove to his uh, grandmother's home in the nearby suburb of Hawthorne for his mother Pamela's uh, birthday party. Knight stayed at the home until around 4.10 p.m. After the party at his grandmother's, he returned home, dropped his sister Sarah off. Uh, didn't stay home long. Then he drove, uh, I believe, somewhere around here in Clifton Hill and visited a friend of his, uh, a female named Lisa. Um, he arrived there at about 4.50 p.m. I didn't stay long. Then he drove back home here. On the way home, his car malfunctioned, it, the gearbox got stuck in second, uh, clearly exacerbating his uh, mounting tensions. The Knight managed to get his, his car back here to 6 Ramsden Street and then at about 5.30 p.m. he left his home and walked to the nearby Royal Hotel. Let's cross over. see Hoddle Street is just 50 meters or so so Julian Knight would have left this home here at number six Ransom Street and headed to the nearby Royal Hotel I am at the site of what is now the former Royal Hotel in Clifton Hill Unfortunately, the pub is closed. It was closed a few years ago. Now, that's looking back along Berry Street, which runs off Ramsden Street. It took me no more than five minutes to walk here. So that's what Julian Knight would have done on that Sunday night. He would have walked down, I assume, this footpath. He left home at circa 5.30 p.m. and came into um, the old Royal Hotel here on Clifton Hill on the corner of uh, Berry and Spenceley Street. This looks like the uh, former entrance. It's now a bottle shop of some sorts. Yeah, here we go. I assume this was the main entrance. Hotel. Unfortunately closed now. Recently closed I do believe. Um, so yes that is the former Royal Hotel. We're in the corner of Spenceley Street and Berry Street, Clifton Hill, where Julian Knight spent his time just before the Hoddle Street Massacre. As I said he Arrived here at about 5.30 p.m. I think closing time was 8 p.m. He stayed for an after hours drink. At the at his time here, he'd, there was nothing out of the ordinary. I think he spent it by himself, chatted to a few people. Um, and he left circa 8.20 p.m. Now the, the, the massacre began at 9.30 p.m. And it wouldn't have taken him long to walk home, so what happened in the interim, no one really knows. Julian Knight later said that it was here at this hotel that he decided that he would go home, get his guns, and start shooting. Good 
now walking on Ramsden Street, heading back to number 6 Ramsden Street. Julia Knight returned home from the Royal Hotel. His mother Pamela and sister Sarah were at home doing their own things. Julia Knight went to his, uh, his room and collected his three guns. He had three firearms, an M14 semi-automatic rifle. He had a 22 caliber semi-automatic rifle and a pump-action Mossberg shotgun. He had 80 rounds for the M14. He had 20, uh, 40 rounds, correction, for the 22, and 25 rounds for the shotgun. He left home here at number six Ramsden Street at 9:30 p.m. and walked just a very short distance to nearby Hoddle Street. And the Clifton Hill Railway Station. Would have walked in this very spot here, come to the railway crossing which a train just happens to be passing by. Now I think in those days, in 1987, the fencing was different and Julian Knight talked about uh, slipping through a hole in the fence and he would have cut across the train tracks to the median strip that separates the train tracks from Hoddle Street. Yes, he would have walked across the train tracks toward the median strip that faces Hoddle Street and this is Hoddle Street Clifton Hill, Melbourne the scene of the, the massacre This is the area which Julian Knight would have used as cover. He most likely came from that direction. I'm assuming there was no fence there in 1987. And in this area here, used as cover, so he could fire onto the vehicles on Hoddle Street. At first, he used his 22 rifle, firing rounds at, the, at any cars that passed. The, low caliber, the lower powered uh, 22 didn't kill anyone. It certainly hit cars and wounded some people and caused general chaos. He then resorted to his uh, shotgun and M14. Again, using this area is cover. Um, one of his first victims was 23 year old Tracy Skinner, who was shot dead in, a, in the passenger seat of a car. 26-year-old John Muscat was, an, was another victim. Twenty-four-year-old Vesna Markovska. Now she had been in one of the cars traveling along Hoddle Street that had been hit initially. She'd got out and, to take cover. 
and um, eventually she tried to she came out from from out of her cover and was shot dead by Julian Knight 27 year old Robert Mitchell he heroically came to assist Vesna but tragically he too was shot dead 21 year old Gina Papanonu she also came to assist Markovsky Mitchell and was fatally wounded Gina survived for 11 days before succumbing to her injuries Fifty-three-year-old Duzan Flagnik was also shot dead while in his vehicle. As Julian Knight fired, he continued moving along here in front of the Clifton Hill Railway Station, using the bushes and billboards as cover. continually moving There's still some billboards here obviously not the same ones as 87 but give an indication of the type of cover that he used as we approach the Clifton Hill railway station it was in this area here where Knight felled his final victim 21 year old motorcyclist Shane Stanton perhaps using this billboard here as a form of cover Shane Stanton was hit and wounded on his bike um, as he lay badly wounded in the street Knight fired repeatedly at him and uh, killed him. Of course, the morning after the massacre, Julian Knight did a recreation with Victoria Police in this very area here and described him. In a incredibly graphic and minute detail about how he shot his victims. And if you look at the footage, you'll see him standing in this general area here. So this is Hoddle Street, Clifton Hill, Melbourne. On Sunday night, August the 9th, 1987, seven people were shot dead here. 19 others wounded by 19-year-old Julian Knight. In the vicinity of the Clifton Hill Railway Station, Standing on the Clifton Hill railway station platform and at 9.45 p.m. Julian Knight retreated as police descended on Hoddle Street. Now I believe he ran down this way and began walking running in that direction of the train tracks. So Julian Knight retreats from Hoddle Street at around 9.45 p.m. that Sunday night along the train tracks. Now obviously I can't walk along the train tracks so if you follow in this direction we'll get an idea of where Julian Knight retreated to. He followed the train tracks So he came to the tracks fork in the and go to the to the left, which is heading towards Fitzroy. So Knight used the train tracks to escape from the area. And he 
come in this direction. We are still on Hoddle Street. Got a signal box. It's Julia Knight. Travel this direction. That's looking back towards Hoddle Street, Clifton Hill Railway Station. Knight using the tracks. At some point around in this vicinity, Knight fired two police in a car, in a police car, but did not wound them. And he come up towards the High Street Bridge up here. I'm standing on High Street. Clifton Hill underneath the bridge now you see the train tracks elevate there and at some point around this vicinity at around 10 p.m. Julian Knight fires at a police officer I think directing traffic trying to divert traffic away from Hoddle Street uh, the police officer was named Colin Chambers and was luckily just grazed by the bullet before once again Knight retreated. I believe he left the train tracks to take cover in the Merry Creek area, which is down here. This is the Merry Creek. So we're in the vicinity of Mary Creek. After shooting at the police officer on the street, Knight retreated into the much more secluded area of the creek. Um, I believe at some point he actually crossed over Mary Creek. Just to the other side over there, and was in this area where Knight took a shot at the police helicopter. A police helicopter was obviously searching the area with Knight in the bushes, and I believe it spotted him in this bridge area. And Knight returned open fire. He shot at the helicopter, actually puncturing the helicopter's fuselage. Knight later said that he expected a police sniper to be on board and have a gun battle but there was no armed officer on board but incredibly the helicopter was forced to make a emergency landing in a nearby area so it was in this area at about 10.05 p.m. that night took his shot at the police helicopter after the helicopter was forced into retreat night continued in this area here at some point he'd have to return to the train tracks and emerge in the suburb of North Fitzroy. One more look at the Merry Creek where Julian Knight retreated to. So that's the High Street Bridge where he fired at the police officer Colin Chambers. We followed the path of the train that way and somewhere emerged into the uh, Merry Creek area. I believe he did cross over to the opposite side you're looking at, the Merry Creek. I think he, on that bank, he fired at the police helicopter before crossing back over to the river and making his way to North Fitzroy. Now that's looking back towards the High Street Bridge where we just came from. I'm on the train tracks that lead to Clifton Hill Railway Station. That's the Merry Creek beyond all the brush where Julian Knight would have emerged from and he must have come his way, made his way this up this embankment and across the train track somewhere in this vicinity. So I'll just cross the track. Um, 
because we're now beside the suburb of North Fitzroy. And let's say Knight made his way down here. And if we follow this path, we emerge into Brennan Street, North Fitzroy. That's the train tracks there. Now we know he came this way because Brennard Street here leads into McKean Street. See there? Now this is McKean Street, North Fitzroy. And if we follow the we follow this road in that direction that way so let's assume you come off the tracks there into Brennan Street into McKean Street and he followed the McKean Street in that direction and eventually was arrested on McKean Street but not in this area here much further down so Julie Knight came this way his exact direction at this time is unclear. He'd make a statement that he was heading to the home of his ex-girlfriend to shoot her. But I'm not sure. That could have been his direction. At this point, he'd already discarded his 22 rifle and shotgun back, at Clip, uh, back on Hoddle Street. And all he had with him was his M14 and a, a limited amount of ammunition. I think just a magazine of around 10 shots left. So Julian Knight walked in this direction, ran this direction in McKean Street, North Fitzroy. So that is McKean Street in North Fitzroy. Knight would have had to have crossed Russell Crescent, Clifton Hill, and then made his way further along McKean Street. So we're walking along McKean Street, where Julian Knight was walking running, jogging, whatever he was doing at about 10.15 p.m. that Sunday night when a police patrol car with two officers inside spotted him. Knight also realised he'd been spotted and he ducked into this very alleyway here on McKean Street. Right here to where Julian Knight made his last stand. So Knight ducked into here to take cover around this area here on this wall. The police car attempted to angle the vehicle so the headlights would illuminate this alleyway. The officer didn't quite get it right. The two officers got out of their car and Julian Knight, who was crouched most likely behind this wall here, opened fire with his remaining ammunition. Narrowly missing the officers. And they return fire, Knight ducking back down. <clears throat> Knight had expended his ammunition. He was now out of ammo. He claims he left a suicide bullet for himself, but had lost it. A, uh, explanation I find very dubious because if Knight truly did want to die um, all he had to do was aim his unloaded rifle at the police and they would have uh, obliged his wishes they wouldn't have known he'd run out of ammunition and you point a gun at, a, at the police then they're going to assume it's loaded but instead of doing that Knight stood up to surrender in doing so, he stood up and the police obviously saw him and fired at him. Knight ducked back down and then shamelessly begged for his life. Um, which again puts pale to any notion that he was on some sort of death wish. And yeah, Knight, the police arrested him. And this is where the Hoddle Street Massacre ended. In this anonymous alleyway 
here on McKean Street, North Fitzroy. Julian Knight was taken into custody at circa 10.15 p.m. on Sunday night, August the 9th, 1987, ending the Hoddle Street Massacre. It's one thing to see Hoddle Street in the daytime, but of course the massacre happened at night starting at about 9.30 p.m. So let's do a bit of a trace of Julian Knight's footsteps in the night time. So he left his home here, number six Ramsden Street. And made his way past John Street. the railway tracks towards Hoddle Street so he angled off into the uh, across the tracks to the medium strip in front of the Clifton Hill Railway Station to Hoddle Street using the bushes as cover fired out into Hoddle Street This is what his view must have looked like. Let go behind here a bit. firing as he went, making his way toward the Clifton Hill Railway Station. Billboards as cover. Behind the billboard signs. Using them as cover also. To fire out into Hoddle Street. Now I'm sure this area of the station has changed over the years, but In behind the billboards all the way to the Clifton Hill Railway Station of course there were victims strewn all across Hoddle Street from towards the Ramsden Street intersection all the way along I think uh, Shane Stanton was shot in the area near in front of the Clifton Hill Railway Station. That is a nighttime perspective of Hoddle Street. Uh, there was a couple of other 
spots involved in the massacre. Let's go have a look at them. Now on the night of the massacre, many survivors uh, retreated to this petrol station, which is just a bit further down, uh, what direction is that? South of Clifton Hill Railway Station, heading toward the city. A lot of people had been shot and wounded or even just escaped the bullets uh, drove into this petrol station and I think it was a mobile petrol station back in 1987 and I'm amazed that it still is mobile to this day what's that 34 years ago amazing so yeah that's that is the petrol station played a role in the night's events Pardon the pun. Um, yeah, Puddle Street. Ramsden Street, just... Just about 50 metres from this location. The shootings happened and... Yeah, the people were treated there. Just one more angle of Hoddle Street on the opposite side. Just the corner of Ramsdam and Hoddle. Julian Knight came through into that darkened area and began firing. See here, this is the Collingwood Leisure Centre. It's over there. One of the survivors, Stephen White, was shot and critically wounded after coming from there to investigate and try to help out. He's looking back toward the Clifton Hill Railway Station, which is around there. That's where Julian Knight fired from. Here in Hoddle Street, Clifton Hill, Melbourne. 